Radio check. Crystal clear, Dr. Lynch. Okay, making my way to the D-deck reception area now. I can access this through the forward grand staircase, right? Yeah, marking it on your map now. You'll need to park off to the side of the staircase this time, leaving the opening clear. On that night of April the 14th, we all, that is, the captain and officers, knew perfectly well that we were just about entering the region where ice might be sighted at that particular time of the year and had taken all necessary precautions. We were steaming that night at a good 22 knots. At 10 o'clock, I was relieved as officer of the watch by Murdoch, W.M. Murdoch. Of course, he knew nothing of the death trap lying ahead of us any more than I did. And so, five bells, six bells, and seven bells went by. But barely ten minutes had passed after the sound of the last bell, when there were three sharp clangs on the crow's nest bell, followed by a cry from the lookout cage, Ice right ahead, sir. Murdoch evidently saw the mass of ice practically at the same time as the lookout men, and shouted, Hard of starboard, full speed astern. Her bow swung a bit, but not enough, and she struck. She took the blow along her starboard side, masses of ice actually falling on the fore deck. What's with the patches of damage on the deck? I thought it would all deteriorate at the same rate. Those sections are deteriorating faster because of visitors to the site. Some people land their subs on deck, making it deteriorate faster. Isn't conservation of this site meant to be important? It is. It just took a while for people to realize what was causing the damage. No one lands on the wreck now. Oh wait, aren't the subs supposed to be neutrally buoyant? They are, but the scratching of the surface is what causes fast deterioration, not the weight. It's better to just not touch anything. I'm at the staircase. Descending to D-Deck now. Alright, I'm at D-Deck. Great. The area in front of you is the reception area. Head forward and you'll find a grand piano on the port side. Is that what I'm photographing? Yeah. An American historian is writing about the Titanic's musicians and wants a clear photograph of the piano. I can't believe this survived. It's beautiful, isn't it? Like something out of a film. I think this is the first room Henderson would have seen when he boarded. 
Did you want to take a minute to look around? Yeah, can I? Of course. The next task is the recovery in the Turkish baths. So head down the grand staircase when you're finished here. All right, I'm ready. Uh, Turkish baths are at the bottom of the staircase, right? Yep, straight down and off to starboard. I'm in the baths now. I can see the oral V here pinned under a pipe. Great. You'll need to get into position and attach the flotation bag to the pipe. The flotation bag is in the Predator's storage compartment. Done. Okay. Last step is to activate the tank, and it should fill the bag. You can activate it from the inventory. Hey, it's working. The pipe is lifting. Great. When the pipe's completely lifted, you can attach your hook and drag the ROV out of here. Right. Ah, I think the motor failed. My arm's not responding. Is everything else okay? Is the line attached? Yeah, everything else is operational, and the line's still connected. Okay, we'll fix the arm when you're back on the surface, but for now, you'll have to be extra cautious. You need to drag the ROV back out to the grand staircase. The extra weight is going to make your controls tricky. Oh, you're not wrong there. Predator's really struggling. I'll need to use my other arm until we get this damaged one replaced. This is going to be difficult. Just take it nice and slow. Am I towing this thing all the way back to the sub? No, we've an easier way to get out of the wreck. Let me know when you're at the staircase. I'm at the staircase again. The next step is to attach a tracker to the ROV. There is one in your compartment. Okay. Now what? Now remove the hook and let it float straight up to the surface. The other diving team will be able to track it and pick it up. Well, there she goes. Should I follow it up? No, we aren't finished down here yet. What's left to do? We need to collect the gear we left in the Turkish baths. The flotation gear? Yeah, it's too expensive to leave down here. You need to deflate the balloon and remove it from the pipe. All done. I'm heading back up. Great. See you soon. I'll get the lab ready to repair Predator.
Looks like the motor went. Yeah, we're lucky it's easy to replace. Hey, Gillian. How are you doing? As well as can be expected, I guess. How did you go with the dive teams? Did you find anything? Not really. I contacted them and looked over the areas of the debris field that they've mapped using cameras. The images are highly detailed, but I couldn't see anything interesting there. They've suggested we consider mapping out an unexplored area. Well, we could take on that contract for you if you want. Our submersible is capable. It's already fitted with sonar and cameras. And we haven't found anything else related to Henderson inside the ship. I think we should start looking outside the bow. Yes, I agree. We may get lucky and find William. And even if we don't, we'll still be contributing to research of the ship and her passengers. Do you have the coordinates for the area they want us to check? Yes, I'll send them through. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm going to the Titanic Convention in Southampton tomorrow. Oh great, getting some research done. Hopefully. It's a good opportunity to meet some of the other relatives of passengers and hear their stories. There's also a demo for a Titanic computer game being shown. Apparently, it's been in development for almost 10 years, but the developers are saying it'll be released soon. It better be. I backed it on Funster years ago. Let us know how it goes. I'd love to hear some stories about Henderson. I suppose we should prepare for the next dive, then. We've got a lot to do before we head out. Thanks for the update, Jillian. Not a problem. Let me know how you get on tomorrow. Will do. Talk later. <sighs> I suppose I better fix that arm. Shouldn't take you too long. There's a replacement one on the table. Radio check. Crystal clear, Dr. Lynch. Alright, let's get this scanning started. I've marked the starting point on your map. So what's the process exactly? Well, it can be a little repetitive, but takes a fair bit of skill. Basically, you need to mow the lawn with your sub. Mow the lawn? What? You need to scan up and down the area following a strict pattern, making sure you cover the entire area. The data you collect doing this will allow us to create a 3D detailed map of the area. And this will help researchers identify items amongst the debris field. Right, so if I don't follow the lines perfectly, I risk missing a bit? Yeah, pretty much. The submersible you're in is already fitted with both sonar and optical equipment for this exact purpose. If we can't make a full mosaic from the images you collect, the blame is kind of on you and your piloting skills. Uh, no pressure, then. Well, we were on, standing on the steerage, third class, they call it, and um, then we couldn't get up to second. And of course, then there was one man with us, and he was our guardian angel, and he said, for God's sake, let the women up. So with that, I got up and then you second. Got, mm -hmm. And then you got into a lifeboat? And no, then I had to go to first cabin. The lifeboats were only going from first cabin. So there was a man on the second deck, and he asked me to go on his shoulder, and I climbed over, and then I... I think it was the last boat that was going out. Did you take any one let me on because there was too many on the boat already. But you got into the But I said to the man, I'd like to go with my sister because there was a neighbor with me and I thought he'd be... Because I didn't want to lose the crowd. I didn't really think it was any danger, but I thought I'd miss them in the dark, you know, the very dark. Did night. you see the ship sink? Oh, yes. I was looking at it sinking when we were in the lifeboat because we were in the lifeboats for nine hours. And then which ship rescued you? Carpathia. Carpathia picked us up then early in the morning, about nine o'clock or something. All right, here we are. Great. I'm just updating your map with the new path for scanning. You'll need to try and follow the lines as well as you can. If you go off track, try to get back on and keep going. Will do. And remember to keep your eyes peeled for anything relating to Henderson. What exactly should I be looking for? His Bible, a pocket watch with his initials, his coat, shoes, anything that might have survived. Right.
Hold on. I didn't see anything jumping out at me, though. Yeah, that's okay. We can double-check the images when you get back up here. They're coming through now. Hopefully something will pop up. Next up is to place a hydrophone. I've marked the location on your map. I'll head over there now. Sorry, but I'm not familiar with this kind of task. What's a hydrophone? Underwater microphone. They're used to record underwater vibrations, like animal sounds and seismic activity. Why has NCPA asked us to set up a hydrophone this deep underwater? Okay, you'll need to dispatch Predator and use the arms to place the hydrophone. It's in the storage compartment. Alright. What's with the center casing? Well, that's all the batteries and computers needed to run the hydrophone and record the data. In a couple of years, they'll organize it to be collected again so they can study the recordings. That's amazing. Do you need to activate anything? Nope, it's all set up. Right, what's next then? Our final contract for today is from a Lebanese society. They want to see detailed images of the funnels. I have the coordinates. I'll mark them on your map. Another easy contract. It pays the bills. I'll head there now. I didn't realize there was a Lebanese Titanic Society. Were there many Lebanese on board? Oh yeah, there was a large Arabic community on board. Over 100 migrants from Lebanon, Syria, and Egypt. Unfortunately, most Arabic names were anglicized on the passenger list, leading to confusion when reporting which people died or survived. That must have been scary for those passengers who didn't speak English. They couldn't have known what was happening. All done. Great. They'll be happy with those images. Anything else? Nope. That's all for today. You're free to explore or head up to the surface. I think I'll explore a little. Oh hey, come check this out. Wow, that worked out great. You aced piloting Sedna. This mosaic has come together really well. I've started going through the images, but haven't found anything so far resembling Henderson's items. Uh, that's a shame. How long will it take to go through all the images? I think I can have them all done tomorrow evening. I really hope we find something. Yeah, me too. Hello Ethan, Jean. How'd you both manage today? Hi Jillian. I think we did well. We've scanned the area, and I've started processing the images. 
Oh, wonderful news. When do you think they'll be done? I'd say tomorrow evening. How did the convention go? It was marvelous. So many people came, and I got to hear a huge range of stories. I'll definitely be attending the next one. Did you hear anything about Henderson? Yes, actually. One lady in particular said her grandmother, Anne, was a survivor and spoke of the accident regularly. She remembers Anne talking about the kindness of a Scottish gent who helped families board lifeboats on the starboard side. Apparently, once he learned teenage boys were being banned from boats on the port side of the ship, he went up and down the boat deck telling them to try on the other side. Sounds like Henderson. How did she know it was him and not another passenger? He was well known in business circles, wasn't he? Yes. Anne didn't realize who it was at the time, but her mother did. Years later, she found letters her mother had written to friends about the kindness of William Henderson and other men who helped passengers. She was thankful that he thought it important to keep families together. That's an impressive story. Does her family still have the letter? Yes, but she didn't bring it with her. She'll email me through a copy when she can. It'd be a great thing to include in the biography. I'd love to accompany it with an image of his final resting place. I hope we'll spot something in these scanned images. I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Do you have a plan if we don't find anything in the images? We'd be at another dead end. I suppose we could select another area and rescan, but I don't wish to keep doing that. My funding can only go so far, and I fear the search would need to be shelved. That's all right. Uh, we understand. I'd love for us to find him, but if we don't have evidence to follow... We'll keep searching the debris field and let you know if we find something. You never know. We might find a new lead tomorrow. I hope so. In the meantime, I'll keep looking for another lead here. We'll talk again tomorrow evening. Speak to you then. So, what's our itinerary for tomorrow's dive? Just one contract job for tomorrow, but it's an interesting one. You'll be assisting Mr. Ocean to film his documentary on the wreck. Mr. Ocean? As in the big shot Hollywood director Eddie Ocean? That's the one. He's requested you help light up the wreck with your sub while he films from another sub. He'll be communicating with you directly through the radio. Wow, this'll be great. It'll be an experience for sure, but he's known to have a bit of a temper, so you'll need to make sure you're fast and efficient. Right. Will you be helping me? No, unfortunately. I'll be spending the entire day here in the lab, searching through the images. You're on your own for this one. Anyone else there? Ocean has two historians in the sub with him, but they won't be much help to you. They're just there to assist him. Mr. Ocean has kindly provided us with new wide-beam lights. Should give you good coverage, and you can use your normal lights for spotlight work. 